Okay, welcome all of you. See, we, in the last class, we started discussing about a new experiment called result type experiment, which is completely different from other experiments we discussed, where we were correlating the information between two abundant spins or between abundant spin and the rare spin and also between two dilute spins by using a 2D inadequate experiment. They were all correlated type experiments. But there is another type of experiment where NMR parameters can be separated out. We have most important two parameters in NMR called J couplings and chemical shifts. They will be invariably present simultaneously in the one dimensional spectrum that will complicate the analysis due to enormous complexity because of n number of interactions for each of the protons or each of the nuclei depending upon the interaction strength multiplicity pattern will be enormous. So, analysis will be very difficult one way out is to separate the interactions in two different dimensions that is what is called J result experiment we can resolve the two parameters in two dimensions and this is what I discussed about J result. J result is nothing but a homonuclear sequence like a spin echo is a 90 tau 180 tau sequence and what is going to happen because of the 180 pulse in between in the homonuclear case chemical shifts are refocused, but J couplings are not refocused they continue to evolve that we discuss every long back. So, instead of fixing the T 1 vary the T 1 and I told you uh, the intensity of the uh, uh, when I take the example of a doublet two couple spins the intensity of the two peaks keep varying gets modulated as a function of T 1 and also it depends upon the strength of interaction we saw that and I took another example of C H 2 group A X 2 couple spin system where we monitor the triplet. In the case of the triplet I said central peak do not process this is what we observed also when we discussed spin echo only outer components of the triplet start processing in the opposite direction their intensity also gets modulated as a function of T 1 the intensity change vary as a function of T 1 and also interaction strength. And finally, we observed that the when we do the two dimensional Fourier transformation of this in the F 1 dimension we are going to get the peaks whose separation gives you a J coupling in the direct dimension you have both the interaction parameters present like chemical shift and J couplings both are present. And that is why we saw that when we took the example of a triplet and a doublet, we saw peaks were tilted like this. When we saw the tri these peaks, they were tilted like this. I see, I am sorry, ah, here they were tilted like this. This is a triplet, and of course, in the triplet, because in this dimension both chemical and J coupling are present, you will see that one peak is moved to the left other is moved to the right here from the center of the chemical shift that is what happens in the 1D spectrum from the center of the chemical shift the one of the coupled peak is moving to the right by, by half j other is to the right of course, in the case of triplet it is j this also j in this case of this one also from the center of this peak start moving on either side this is here uh, this is the uh, peak quadrant it is going to be a quadrant they behave similar to CH peak like a doublet but both the cases in the CHK the center is a chemical shift here also central peak is a chemical shift. But in the indirect dimension what we can do is we can measure J coupling here between this and this between this and this this and this this and this that gives a J coupling very easily you can get J coupling information. But another thing what we can do is look here everything appears tilted by 45 degree there is a 45 degree tilt here why cannot I tilt, tilt the this thing by spectrum by doing what is called processing I can do a different type of processing tilt the entire spectrum by 45 degree then the peaks which were here started moving this thing peaks which, which, which were here started coming like this. For example, in this case when I tilt it what is going to happen is the frequencies will not change only this moves here here this moves here and this will move this side this will move this side exactly the here this moves this side this moves this side this is the center this is what is called a 45 degree tilt. If you do that 
you get a triplet here, you get a quartet here. Center from the center of the triplet you measure, you get J coupling, and here J coupling is obtained from adjacent separations. Measure the adjacent peak separations, you are going to get the J coupling. This is called 45 degree tilted J results, not projection, the 45 degree tilting of A3X2 or A2X3 spin system. A2 is going to be a quartet because of X3, X3 is going to be a triplet because of this, and that is what we see a triplet and a quartet. This is a simple J result experiment. We resolve the chemical shift J coupling in one dimension and chemical shift and coupling in the other dimension. And by doing the tilting, the advantage is we removed J coupling in the this dimension also. All right. How it is very useful, especially in understanding the complex spectrum. You can just say an example like this, an hypothetical molecule. I am going to put different colors here. You complicate one the spectrum. This is how it is. That means I'm, I have put deliberately color. I know this is a doublet. I know this, this and this is a triplet. This and this doublet. This, this and this is a triplet and doublet and triplet. And deliberately it is numbered, colored. And you can see that there are overlaps here. There is a complexity. Spectral complexity is too much to extract the coupling information. This is where J result comes into the picture. What we do is we take the J result and tilt it by 45 degree. If we do not tilt it by 45 degree, you can still get peaks like this, it can still be ok. But then we are tilted by for tilting it by 45 degree. Advantage is you can see that these two peaks which were a doublet is here, this and this peak which was a which were doublets here, the triplet comes here doublet, triplet and doublet. Such a complex spectrum here, what we did? We simplified it by just removing one of the parameters, resolving it, taking it away, putting in different dimensions. We our analysis becomes simpler. Directly we get chemical shifts here and measure here, we get J coupling. This is the biggest advantage of a J result experiment where the spectral analysis gets drastically simplified. Okay. Another biggest advantage is the projection of the 2D spectrum on the F2 axis and the direct detection axis gives rise to what is called a broadband proton decoupled proton spectrum. Remember we discussed broadband proton decoupled carbon 13 spectrum. What did I say at that time? We can irradiate at the radio at the with a second radio frequency radio frequency at the proton chemical shift center of the proton spectral width with a certain power larger than the coupling strength. Then we can break all the carbons coupled to all the protons broadband in a single experiment that is what we discussed. That is easy that type of heteronuclear broadband decoupling is very easy to do because the spectrometer frequency is different observation detection frequency is carbon 13 and uh, irradiation frequency for decoupling is proton frequency there are several hundred megahertz apart easy to do. Whereas, if you want to do the broadband decoupling of the proton while detecting proton it is not easy it is very very challenging because when you are decoupling you are already signaling uh, you know you have brought this magnetization x-ray plane you will completely distribute it when you apply RF pulse for decoupling it is not easy it is very very challenging. So, but if we can decouple somehow it is possible for us to get the coupling information in one dimension and chemical shift in the other dimension in a very simple manner that is possible. But the simplest experiment you can think of for such broadband proton decoupled proton spectrum is taking the projection of the J result spectrum on the F 2 axis this is what it is. We take the projection earlier it, the, the, we saw doublet triplet everything was there with a complex spectrum. Now, what we did? We took the projection. See, look at it. This gives you chemical shift. This gives chemical shift of this proton, and this gives you J coupling. What did you do here? No HH coupling. J HH is completely removed. 
because you are removing the all proton proton couplings here it is broadband decoupled so directly you can get the chemical shifts this is the beauty of this experiment 2d j result if you take it and take the projection of it onto f2 axis you are going to get chemical shift of all the protons fantastic broadband decoupled proton spectrum this is an example a 45 degree tilted pulse uh, beauty what you can see here is is a pentet this pentet comes because of two quad two peaks which are overlapped but there are two different chemical shifts look at it 1 3 3 1 1 quartet 1 3 3 1 1 quartet but the, each of them has different chemical shifts here that you can extract easily two quartets 1 3 3 1 1 3 3 1 quartet and this is chemical shift of one of the quartets here and the chemical shift of the other quartet is here and this quartet 1 3 3 1 triplet doublet and a singlet everything is there in a hypothetical spectrum where you know how to resolve it so generally what is going to happen is the homonuclear couplings are between 1 to 20 hertz not more we are always the hh coupling if you are looking at it very rarely you get more than 15 or 20 all within that so what the type of experiment what you have to do the t1 dimension and the experimental aspects i never discussed because it was in the previous courses i extensively discussed about parameters for using for setting the parameter for experiments but anyway t1 number of points we require to get the better resolution in the especially in the 2dj result if you take 256 points and 512 the spectral width has to be very small only to cover 20 hertz or 50 hertz maximum 20 or 30 hertz you put it or 50 hertz the 512 points the hertz per point becomes very small you can calculate if for 550 hertz spectral width to be covered in the 5 with 512 point if you have to digitize your digital resolution becomes 0 0.09 hertz per point that means you can measure the J coupling with very high accuracy in the J result because we do not have to cover a large spectral width. And this is a simple example ethyl protonate and you see here lot of, lot of things are crowded here. Of course, looking at the spectrum one can easily assign it, but if you want to do the 2 dj result you can extract it very easily like this. This is a triplet, this is a doublet coming because of various reasons and it is in fact doublet of doublet you see doublet of doublets are here this is a quartet two quarters are here separated out and easily you can interpret the spectrum and in a very very complex molecule this is where the beauty comes into the picture look at this spectrum of this molecule very complex molecule look at proton spectrum very complex you, you have both j coupling and chemical shifts present here it is not possible to analyze so easily look at this crowded region you see you have to identify which are the coupled multiplets if you take two coupled spins which is triplet which is the quartet which are the quartet peaks which are the triplet peaks when they are overlap identification is a challenge but now by doing this 2 dj result we can assign all the peaks you see they are all resolved here this is j result j dimension this is the chemical shift dimension especially when you take the projection of it you get chemical shifts easily this is a 45 degree projected j result spectrum of this complex molecule you get chemical shifts here and in this dimension you measure j couplings you see the how beautifully the complexity of the spectrum could be reduced and analysis becomes fairly simple this is the measure and one more advantage is i want to tell consider a molecule like this we have phosphorus proton we have proton proton couplings here and phosphorus is also abundant spin that can also couple to proton if i take a proton spectrum we have proton proton couplings and also proton phosphorus coupling both are present so that means in the this is a proton spectrum you have both homonuclear and heteronuclear couplings are present. What are homonuclear couplings? JHH plus JHP is heteronuclear, both are present. But what we can do is we can extract only heteronuclear couplings. How is it possible? You have to remove hey, homonuclear couplings. How do you do that? Just now we did do the proton proton 
j result experiment and take a projection then in this dimension you get only chemical shifts and this you are th then you have removed the HH coupling you are getting only proton chemical shifts and you are going to get proton proton couplings here and here you are going to get HP couplings. See for example, multiplicity pattern is here center of this correspond to chemical sheet of this and this is a this multiplicity pattern correspond to phosphorus proton couplings here also. So, very easily you can measure the heteronuclear coupling by doing homonuclear J result and taking a projection of 45 degree I mean, tilted by 45 degree and take the projection this is what you are going to do and this is a simple example of a molecule the comp is a molecule here 2 3 difluoropyridine there are 3 protons here 3 groups of protons are here and each proton is coupled to 2 fluorines you get H i coupling and H f couplings this proton can couple to this this and also these 2 fluorine of course, F f coupling you do not see that is a passive there are passive spins you do not see it. So, if you look at the proton spectrum there are 3 different protons each of them is a multiplet because of both homo and heteronuclear couplings present, but how do you extract only H f couplings from this molecule what we do is we do the proton experiment J result and take a projection here when you take this proton and take a projection here this projection gives me only HF, HP, HF couplings here here this separation gives me HF coupling because proton proton coupling is removed what are the multiplicity you are get, getting here as a projection on this projection whatever you are getting are fluorine phosphorus coupling to confirm that if you do the fluorine decoupling same 4 peaks you are going to get here. this is what it is. So, we can get the heteronuclear couplings from the homonuclear J result spectrum and then taking a tilted by tilted by 45 degree and take the projection that helps in getting the heteronuclear couplings. So, these are all homonuclear J result experiments and lot of advantages we discussed. Can we get a heteronuclear J result also everything is possible in NMR not anything is not difficult at all why not we get the heteronuclear J result spectrum what we have to do this is a very easy pulse sequence we know that in the whole in the when you have a proton and x nuclei we discuss this also to the spin echo modulation and spin echoes we when we apply both these things both at the 180 pulse simultaneously and both J will evolve uh, that we we know that we are we all discussed a lot about it and of course this is a sequence which we did for homonuclear J result. Simultaneously here we are also doing decoupling here when you are decoupling X nuclei we are doing decoupling. The, what is the advantage you get you break the coupling between carbon and proton get individual resonances plus there is an NOE enhancement that will also come into the picture this is sequence simultaneous 180 person 1 H refocuses both the carbon 13 chemical sheet, but the heteronuclear J coupling will continue to evolve that is what I said in the heteronuclear J result in the spin echo when we discussed we said simultaneous application of 180 pulse on both the channels both X nuclei and proton or both the heteronuclear spin will make sure coupling will evolve, but chemical shifts get refocused with that idea that is simple pulse sequence design we can continue to do the experiment and in the T 2 dimension collect the spectrum of heteronucleus like carbon and nitrogen 50 and do the decoupling of protons. So, this is what happens so, what is going to happen during the spin echo sequence in the T 1 chemical shifts are refocused signal get modulated only due to heteronuclear J coupling exactly similar to homonuclear J coupling what we discussed the uh, splitting pattern if the components the multiplicity there are several components of the multiplicity their intensity keeps changing depending upon the delay T 1 and the interaction strength that continues to happen here also okay. and there is an experiment for doing this 
this experiment is called spin flip or proton flip method. We can do that ok, we will understand uh, those things later. This experiment is what is called a proton flip experiment or spin flip experiment. Heteronuclear Jerizol spectrum tilted by 45 degrees like this. This also get you know J coupling and chemical shift on the uh, F2 dimension. So, when you are tilting it see for example, this is CH2 pro car carbon. CH2 is a triplet because of coupling with carbon with three, 2 protons. CA3 is going to be a quartet beautiful. Again CA3 quartet, quartet, triplet, triplet and this is CH is a doublet. Very easily you will measure for this molecule all the carbon proton one bond coupling easily. Simply do the experiment tilt by 45 degree you will measure the J coupling and projection gives you corresponding chemical shifts ok. What happens if there is no 180 pulse and, and only proton decoupling especially in the proton channel here if there is no 180 pulse simply you should understand by now since we have discussed J modulation at stretch if there is no 180 pulse it means what is going to happen. 180 pulse and exposed refocus chemical shift and also heteronuclear J coupling because when the when we discuss J modulation I said 180 pulse and one of the heteronuclear H we will refocus J couplings and also that particular chem chemical shift. If the 180 pulse is applied and proton it refocuses the heteronuclear J coupling and but refocus proton chemical shifts not carbon. So, but simultaneous application of 180 pulse and both refocus the chemical shifts but not the J coupling in which case if you supply only single 180 pulse and not an proton it is not a useful experiment it is a useless experiment that does not give you any information. So, you must apply 180 pulse simultaneously on both proton and carbon channels. So, heteronuclear J result can be done by what is called a gated decoupling method this is what is called a gated decoupling method. What we do here is in the previous thing if you see carefully if you see here in we started decoupling at the time of acquiring the signal see here we start collecting the signal here in the T2 dimension and I we apply decoupling power simultaneously and NO is done here and NO is done here. <coughs> Whereas, here an experiment is done where decoupling starts even before uh, during the first half of the T1 period this is what is called a gated decoupled experiment where X spin chemical shifts are refocused due to 180 pulse in the middle of the T1, but heteronuclear J coupling continuity evolved for this period, but not this period. That means, heteronuclear coupling will evolve for half a period then afterwards decoupling will break it you will decouple the both of them there is no coupling. So, it evolves only for half a period what does it mean the J couplings are reduced by half it is an experiment you get enhanced intensity, but J couplings are reduced by half this is what is going to happen look at this this heteronuclear J result experiment on this menthol molecule and different carbons are identified here for example, carbon 9 somewhere here CA 3 it is a quartet, but do not directly measure this and say this is a J coupling it is only half J because it is a gated decoupled heteronuclear J result. I am just giving an example how we can do different types of J result experiments. To enhance the intensity we can do this, but only thing is you have to be careful in interpreting interpreting. So, the J couplings are not just full value it is half the value. And measuring of the long range J couplings we can also do. So, we, so we got only one bond J couplings here in all these experiments triplet correspond to this quartet correspond to CH3 coupling and this is CH and this is CH2 is a triplet like that. But then what about long range coupling that also we discussed when we discussed about carbon 13 for example, this carbon can couple to or this carbon can couple to this proton two bond coupling may be present can we get the J coupling long range coupling it is possible to do it. If you want to measure the long range coupling certain things have to be done. First we have to remove one bond coupling because that will interfere. 
similar to your HSQC, HMBC. When you are doing HMBC, you are removing one bond coupling, one bond correlation. Exactly here, one bond JCH has to be, we have to remove the evolution of that. That is one of the requirement. Secondly, the digital, of course, the advantage of this when you have the long range coupling, spectral width is very small. Di di uh, digital resolution becomes better, digital resolution gets enhanced. So, as a consequence, long range coupling of the order of 10 to 50 hertz, you can measure precisely with a very high accuracy you can measure, but only thing is you have to design an experiment for that and this is an experiment for that. What it does? Of course, this you know is a homonuclear spinoco sequence, but on the proton channel we are applying a bird sequence. Yesterday or day before yesterday, day before yesterday I discussed about bird sequence. Bird is a 90, 180, 90 here sequence like this. What this sequence will do? This sequence when you apply, I discuss this and also explain with the vector diagram, selectively it is inverts carbons attached to proton, proton uh, 12, uh, proton attached to carbon 12 they get selectively inverted. This bird has no effect uh, for carbon 13 attached to protons, only carbons 12 attached to protons are selectively inverted. That is we saw that especially when we were discussing HMPC, I explained this, this thing <coughs> all right. So, uh, th this is what is written here, it inverts those protons that share long range couplings, this experiment protons directly bonded remain unaffected here in this sequence not in the bulb I am telling in the present sequence of the uh, J result experiment for long range this is what happens it inverts only those protons that share long range couplings protons directly bonded remain unaffected. At the end of T 1 period 1 J C H is refocused only long, J, long range couplings are retained. We design the experiment in such that long range couplings one bond couplings are refocused and only long range couplings are retained and the F 1 dimension gives only long range couplings here that is the advantage and this is a selective heteronuclear J result experiment. You can do it selective or non-selective both in the sense in the previous experiment here you can do it for all the peaks to get the long range couplings. A, a suppress one bond J coupling and all other long range couplings will be observed. But same thing I can ask a question there are so many protons so many carbon can I get the long range coupling only for a particular carbon that is I have a carbon here and then there are long range couplings for the here here can I get only these couplings for only for one particular carbon it is possible the same experiment we can make it selective this is called selective heteronuclear J result experiment in which case we apply a selective pulse not 180 pulse, 180 pulse is selectively not a broadband hard pulse it is a selective pulse on a particular carbon I am sorry said particular proton here we are applying that. When you apply that then what is going to happen is selective pulse invert the selected proton only all the JCHs are refocused except for that selected proton all the JCHs are refocused only for that selector proton carbon couplings are retained long range couplings are retained. So, indirect dimension always displays simple doublet, triplet, quartets etcetera because one carbon experiences coupling with remote pro protons long range coupling it can be one proton or two protons or three protons it could be maximum doublet or a triplet or single quartet like this. This is what happens this is a selective long range heteronuclear J result experiment of one molecule like this and this is the molecule which is selectively irradiated and there are four different carbons here 1, 2, 3 and 4. This proton can experience different couplings what are they? It can experience I am sorry it can experience coupling between let us say 1, 2, 3 bond coupling to 1 here 2.8 hertz this measured separation gives you 2.8 and 2 if you consider here 
this proton 1 2 bond coupling to this proton for 4 you can consider here 4 is here 1 2 3 and 4 bond 4 bond coupling very small 1 hertz see the measured values see in the long range coupling selectively for a particular proton selectively invert only for that proton the couplings are retained for all others are refocused and we can measure long range couplings very precisely and we can use this to distinguish various things like endoform exoform etcetera as very in fact in this molecule it was used to define endo and exoform because the endo and exoforms of this molecule the coupling strengths are known for us. The selective long range heteronuclear coupling can also be done with a proton detection, but remember here in this experiment what we did here we are detecting carbon decoupling proton always I told you decoupling of a detection of a heteronuclear like abundant dilute spin like carbon 13 is very very time consuming that is the advantage of doing HSQC what we did we detected proton by transfer the magnetization from carbon to proton and back transfer why cannot we do that if you do that we can detect the same in the J coupling experiment can be designed with proton detection then your experiment becomes faster sensitivity will go up all we have to do is the same with this you are very already familiar with this it is an inept sequence this is your selective J, J, J sequence heteronuclear J sequence with a selective pulse on the proton reverse inept to collect the signal back to proton and detect exactly what you did for the previous pulse sequence with a selective uh, proton you selectively invert and get the couplings to different carbons for, uh, for a particular carbon then what we are going to do is we get the, we can get the couplings to remote remote or long range couplings but they are time consuming because we detect carbon 13 same experiment is done by selective 180 pulse with a polarization transfer and reverse transfer and this is the advantage the inept sequence results in polarization transfer selective pro, uh, pulse inverts only selected proton all the JCH has refocus except for the selected proton. So, magnetization transfer is back transfer to inept and detected the like in this case if you see here selected uh, this proton this proton coupling to all the carbons we are inverting this proton this proton coupling to remote carbons we see if you invert other proton that proton coupling to other carbons you see this is what it is called selective experiment we do and this is the example of a spectrum of a selective long range heteronuclear J result with proton detection this is what it is done selectively inverted this one h prime is selectively inverted coupling of h prime to different carbons you can see here because we are detecting proton indirectly ok. So, this is what it is and this is with this I told you a lot of things about J result experiment homonuclear J result long range detection you know long range pulse J result measurement homonuclear J coupling measurement and broadband homonuclear decoupled broadband spectrum by getting the projection of the proton spectrum after 45 degree tail. In the heteronuclear case we also wanted to enhance the sensitivity by selectively inverting a proton and, and getting the long range couplings of that proton to different carbons that can be done with the proton detection by doing polarization transfer technique and then back transfer to proton like inept and reverse inept experiment number of things have been done. But remember what I have given is a tip of an iceberg in principle this J result experiments it has been modified enormously there are number of experiments are available each of them to with a improved version to get a particular information. We have two dimensional version HSQC it can be compared with HSQC it can be compared with the HMBC also if you do long range HMBC if you get a well resolved spectrum HMBC I said we do always do in a coupled mode we do not decouple we can get H, uh, J coupling also heteronuclear J coupling. So, we can do with we coupled with HMBC coupled with TOXC and varieties HSQ MBC varieties of experiment if you go there are number of papers published lots and lots of papers have been published lots of reviews are there only in a measurement of J couplings at one homonuclear that many number of pulse sequences have been designed with many of them have been with improved version 
and lot of information can be read. excellent experiments have been designed. So, I gave you only the principles and fundamentals for sequences, but the idea is similar. The rest of the things are only slightly improved versions to get better information or to get a better resolution, enhance the sensitivity or speed up the data like that. That is the way expulse sequence have been designed. Apart from that, it is all remaining same. So, this with this I am coming to the end of this J result experiment. Today we, we discussed lot about J result and hopefully you understood why it is done to simplify the spectrum where the information from uh, two parameters can be separated out in two dimensions to aid the simplified analysis. You may ask me a question what do I do by getting J coupling? J coupling can be utilized a lot for getting structural information. We discussed a lot about Karplus equation. So, these are all uh, advantages is one such 2D experiment. So, with this the result type experiment I am going to stop from tomorrow we will start some altogether different type of experiment. Again it is a correlation experiment, but not through bond, but something else. So, we wait for it tomorrow we will discuss something more. Thank you very much.